because I see two Carrie Burns here. Hey you okay? Okay, so our next session is Make Your Library. I'm sorry. Make Your Library the Heart of Your High School. And I present to you, Carrie Burns and Holly Hensley. Take it away, ladies. Good morning. Good morning. Oh, you're on mute, honey. Um, it's not letting us share the screen. Okay, so you got a little echo going. Let's see. And okay, sure. Carrie's gonna mute. Okay, so. But it's it says the host is disabled participant screen sharing. How about so that? We're we're having some technical difficulties to share our slideshow. Okay, can you share it now? Are you trying to share with Carrie? Yes. Okay. Yeah, it's still not letting her. Okay, then I'm gonna try the other Carrie then. Because I see you coming up twice on my my board here. Huh. How about that? There we go. Got it. Okay. Right. Take it Thank away, you. ladies. Okay. Um, I'm Holly Hensley. I am a high school librarian at Rouse High School in Leander, Texas. And we just wanted to share some general ideas today about how we work to make our library the heart of our high schools. Um, Carrie's the librarian at Cedar Park High School. We're both in the same district here in Leander. Um, and we've just really kind of taken a little bit different um, take on a high school library because when we kind of came into our positions, things had been pretty traditional where the librarian was pretty much leading research and you know, just, just kind of an old school um, setup. And we've both done a lot of work to bring in, um, writing up some grants, creating maker spaces, um, just kind of broadening what it means to, to be a high school librarian. And so we both have, um, we've brought in green screens. And uh, so we just wanna talk a little bit about changing things up and changing our mindset about how to make uh, high school libraries successful. Okay, so the first thing that I did is, is my library is, it's beautiful, but it's kind of a huge vaulted ceilings and it just didn't have a lot of pizzazz. So the first day I walked into my library and first of all, I was hired during COVID in 2020. So it was kind of an eerie time to start a new school. So, um, and then a, a big majority of my students chose to stay home that year. So the teachers were doing that difficult struggle of trying to teach online to the kids that were at home and to the five kids who were in their classroom. So I was trying really hard to push into the classroom then, but it also gave me a lot of time to work on my environment while I didn't have a lot of kids here. So um, I made that first year a lot about changing up the environment. So I brought in a lot of lamps and plants and engaging displays and um, started setting up that makerspace area with all free supplies and tools for kids and teachers to use and glue guns and all the things that they don't have to ask, they just know straight where to go for it. And then to also, because it did start during COVID, we really focused on mental health tools, like having coloring sheets and conversation starters. And we have the little Buddha boards that you can go paint. And, um, and then we discovered how popular that was with the kids. And so we really, you know, had that um, really expand and they still appreciate it today. So that's a big focus in our spaces as well. So we've also both done a lot of programming. We're both um, club sponsors for a lot of different clubs. And if you look in the document, we have links to some resources about each of these different clubs. Um, I'll let Holly talk about Poetry Club in a second, but I'm the D&D sponsor at my school. And there's some educator resources in that document um, for D&D Club. And I would say that's one of the most natural like library clubs for after school, um, because it's all about adventure and traveling to new places, traveling to new worlds, which is what books let us do. Um, so it's so, so fun. Um, and some of the other clubs I feel like have been really natural library clubs also. Um, and like Holly said, leading some makerspace sessions, just kind of giving tutorials about how to do the different activities. Um, and we have more resources in another slide for those. Um, and then this is just some of the um, kind of pictures in our space of kids interacting and really enjoying those um, resources. Okay, um, really one of my favorite things to do has been um, really encouraging and growing my makerspace areas. So I kind of have some different things going on with Makerspace. I wrote up a grant my uh, 
first year here, and I was fortunate enough to be granted a, a pretty generous grant. So I went in and bought um, kind of an array of some techie things and, and then some kind of low tech things as well. And then, um, so that's just kind of available to the kids all the time. And, and really they, what's been most appealing is really the low tech, like coming in with playing with Legos, coloring, playing the games. Um, but then I've chosen to do a monthly makerspace session. And that um, happens to, during the kids advocate time, which is a half hour every day where they can, you know, go out to a teacher that they need tutoring with, or the, um, they can sign up for a makerspace se session. So those have really grown. Um, it was kind of hard when I first started because I started that first year during COVID. So I'd have a little teeny tiny um, group of kids that showed up, but I was like, that's okay, we're, we're growing this. And this is, I'm starting my fourth year on this campus now, and it's really grown. And um, it's grown to the point where it's kind of challenging because I'm figuring out how to come up with funding for these events every month, because um, you'll see on the page, uh, some of the most popular makerspace sessions I've had are knitting, um, friendship bracelets, Sowing seeds in the spring is a huge hit. The kids love to come in and I actually have a nursery locally here that gives me seeds for free. But the kids are so cute because they come back and share their pictures of their babies, uh, baby plants. And that's definitely one of the most popular. The little perler beads that they can make um, art with and then you, you, know, you, put, you heat them with the iron and it all melts together. Um, and then a lot of times I'll just kind of come up with something um, that just fits with whatever's free or um, something falls in my lap. Like a friend of mine said, hey, I have 40 aloe vera plants. And I said, I'll take them. So I brought all these baby aloe vera plants to school. And you'll see in the picture on this slide, um, we used, we did a little watercolor painting of our baby aloe plant and um, did a little bit of research about the benefits of aloe and the kids really enjoyed that. And you can see from the picture that the turnout has really grown over the last few years. And so like if you get started with something, don't, don't be discouraged because word spreads and I just put a little um, announcement in the week before of our, you know, our makerspace session and we've gotten to the point now where I have to have the kids sign up so I know how much, how many materials we need. Um, I, on the next, what we did is did some journal decoupaging, and um, you can see from the pictures here uh, in January, sometimes we try to do things seasonally, so they bring their planners in, and I just had a bunch of stickers that they could, um, you know, mark their planner up for the year. Um, the friendship bracelets was, were huge, and then sometimes we'll try to look around at, you know, um, things that, like we said, things that we have on hand. I think Carrie and I both did the it's kind of hard to see in the picture, but the paper roses using some of our weeded books and they, they really enjoyed that. So, you know, a lot of it's really simple, but um, it was cute when it was uh, the last makerspace I did before graduation. One of my girls that comes to all of our programming, uh, her, she, I heard, I overheard her saying, I would really miss makerspace as so she was working on her thing. And I thought, you know, I think it's, it really comes down to that bonding with your their friends and having having a creative outlet and um, it's just it's been a big hit here. Um, we've also done lots of passive programming, so we both have shelves where our board and card games sit, and um, we have um, book uh, barcodes on them so the kids can check them out and actually go back to class with them when it's not, you know, before school, after school, our advocate time in the middle of the day or lunch. They could actually, if their teacher's having like a fun Friday during class, they could actually go back to class with those materials. We also have, um, as you can see in the pictures, like some coloring stations or posters. And I put some links to that in the document um, for, we just made them on Canva or printed them, you know, kind of for the themes of the month. Um, like she said, Legos and like strawbies, those stick together things like some of the other presenters have mentioned were just great little passive um, things that are always there for the kids to access and know that they can kind of play on their own and have fun without necessarily as having to lead them into it, just for them to know that they can walk in the space and really um, access materials, make things their own and, and play. Um, and then Holly, a person asked in the chat um, where you wrote your grant to, and yeah. if you have any resources for them on writing grants. Sure, um, our, our school district has a, ours is called LEAF. Um, and so it's, it's open to teachers to write grants. Um, for you know whatever they need in their classroom. So mine was actually through my district and I'm welcome to share pointers. Um, 
I think the fact that I collaborated with some teachers and showed how that you know people could bring their classes in and it benefited the whole school that they really liked that a lot. And I saw somebody asked about when I do my makerspace sessions. Uh, we have that advocate time every day. That's it's a little half hour chunk of time. So you know they have to. It has to be something really simple because we only have a half hour, which I kind of like. So you know it keeps it from being really complicated. Um, Somebody also asked if we have tutorials for some of the crazy makerspace, makerspace fun stuff we do. Um, Holly and I have both kind of found some tutorials on TikTok or YouTube, but we've also made a couple tutorials of our own and we put them in the Google Doc. And we've got a couple new ideas for some makerspace this year. So we'll continue to add to that same Google Doc, um, some of the ones that we are trying out this year. We're actually gonna both try out some letter stamping, some metal letter stamping. Um, and I'm gonna try out some resin, um, like keychain and jewelry making. So I'm excited about that. Um, literacy love, that's it. Okay, so um, it, I just love the, the session that we just sat through with um, Melanie's ideas. Uh, we took away some great new ideas from her. Um, part of the literacy love that, that's really taken off on my campus is I have a book club. And <laughs> I started off because I was really, you know, there, was, there really wasn't a lot of lot going on when I first started. So I said, I want to start a book club with the kids who are here on campus. And then we also um, had it virtually. And so that first year we did just talking about whatever books we were reading. But then the second year we voted as a group and we decided that the kids really wanted to read the same book together at the same time. So I have um, managed, I still had a little bit of um, grant money left over. So I was able to start buying the kids all the, a copy of the same book. And they they really, really enjoy that. And that way they can annotate in their book. And so what happens is each month, um, they I take suggestions from the kids and then we vote on, in a Google form and then we choose the book and I order it from, I, I just order them from Amazon. And I try to, you know, usually I, I'm honest with the kids. I'm like, it can't be something brand new because I need to be able to buy it in paperback for about $10 a book so I can make this work. Well, it's totally ballooned. And so I'm having issues now trying to figure out how I'm gonna come up with all the money, but my book club has gotten huge. So I, you know, I probably have 30 kids in book club and we meet once a month and we all read the same book. And that's been like one of my greatest joys of my job. And that's become a really tight knit group. And one thing that's a challenge is it's um, all girls, but one boy. So I do need to work on developing some ways to reach out to the, the guys on our campus, but um, the book club has been a huge success. And Carrie did a, an amazing thing at her school with the book swaps where the kids can bring in books and she had tables all set up right before summer. And so the kids could just come in and take a book. And I think there's something valuable to them having, being able to build their bookshelf at home of their own books. Um, and so that's that's been a lot of fun. And then we do writing contests, book festivals. We've, um, Carrie and I have gone to book festivals. I've taken kids um, on a field trip to our, to our Texas Teen Book Festival. They hold it right here in Austin. So that's nice, it's, it's close. Um, she, I've had um, at least one author visit a year, but Carrie, man, she, she knocked it out of the ballpark. Did you, how, many, how many authors did you have? Like four? four? Yeah. So she's done a great job of figuring out um, when those authors are going to be in town for some of the book festivals or the local authors. And a lot of those local authors have been amazing. Like the author I had come in, I bought 30 copies of her book. Um, it was Khalees Rowe and she's amazing. So I bought 30 copies of her book and gave it to my book club, you know, the month before her visit. And so they all read it and they're, and then we do it all, we do it up real big for the author visit. We have, you know, the fancy, food and drink and decorations and a big poster of our author and welcome la 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 um so the kids really enjoy that and i think she really enjoyed having this group of teenagers who have all read her book and giving her feedback and um it was just a it was a great celebration and um yeah carrie's just done an amazing job of figuring out how to get those people in because you know you have you have a limited budget and she's done um she's the one to talk to you about getting the, I'm just like, she, she, she found Khalees Rowe and I was like, yes, <laughs> I'll have her too, please. <laughs> she's a really great local author. Um, her kid goes to my school, so she reached out to us. It was just perfect. Talk about your yeah. poetry podcast. Okay, so poetry is another one of my jams. I, I, I enjoy poetry. So I think sometimes like 
the whole literacy love is sharing what you love. And it's going to be different from person to person, but I really enjoy poetry. So like I said, that first year that I was here, I was really looking for ways to get kids in the library because, you know, it felt really strange to have this silent campus. And so we started this little poetry club and it grew um, and the kids really got into it. So uh, I was, I had started a podcast at my last school and I was kind of dipping my toe back in that. So we started a poetry podcast uh, here on my campus and that's been amazing. And the kids have just taken it and run with it. So I'm just pretty much the moderator, but you know, they, they did like anti Valentine's this year. And so they, they read all their poetry about hating love and <laughs> and it's been Thank great you. to yeah, hear the student voice. Um, we are very fortunate because we're in a large district. We have a Sora and they, we have a very healthy budget for Sora. And I think that has really helped us serve our, our reluctant readers because we are all about promoting that listening with your ears is still, or reading, re reading with your ears is still reading. Um, so we have an amazing selection of eBooks and audiobooks on Sora. And one of the ways that I reach out to build those relationships with teachers too, is I make little Sora bookmarks and it explains how to get the kids and the student and the teachers to log into Sora to be able to um, access those books. But that's another way, like we try to do a good job of reaching out to teachers and building those relationships. So we would give them a little bag of Sora bookmarks and a little treat for the teachers um, in our ELA department to get the word out about that. And then um, we do encourage summer reading and um, we, we kind of do that. That's one cool thing about, we have six um, major high school libraries here in Leander. So we all get together and share resources and um, put all that information out for to challenge kids during summer. Um, and for the spine poetry, I put a link in the document. I actually had an ELA teacher come in and so she put together a whole, I think it's a leaflet um, or a padlet with the spine poetry that the kids came in and made. So they physically manipulated the books and they had a great time. Um, the only thing I will say is prepare yourself to spend some time reshelving all those books, but you could also have them help you if you're brave enough to think they could put them in order. Um, it was a lot of fun though, and, and it kind of broke their um, misconceptions or preconceptions about what, what's okay to do in the library and what's not okay, and is it okay to pick up a book if I'm not sure, and can I put it back, or can I, you know, play with books, like, oh, it's okay to play with books, so that was a lot of fun. Oh, and I forgot the biggest thing is our poetry slam. Ah, so the poetry slam is like one of my favorite events all year, and we turn the lights off in the library and, and do the little fake candles, and um, I, I set it up like with their microphone and a little stool, just like you're in a coffee house. And um, the kids have to sign up either to come uh, perform or be part of the audience. And um, they they just love it. And it, that has really grown. And they do the snaps um, instead of claps. And that's been a lot of fun as well. Um, Holly, they want us to add a link to the Sora bookmark to our doc. Absolutely. Oh, sure. We will do that for you. Um, so moving on to our author visits, um, I just want to emphasize, and I did put a planning um, document, a link to it in the in the doc we shared with you guys. So we put all the authors I had last year, which um, Holly had some of those, and then I also put the doc, the authors we're thinking about having this year um, and kind of how to reach out to them. Some of them they'll put on their website like a form for reaching out if you're a school. Um, and then others, they have, you know, um, agencies, um, agents and, and people that schedule their events to reach out to. So just kind of go with, with what's on their website. Um, we've also been fortunate enough to meet some of these authors locally, and they've um, locally touched base with us and said, hey, just DM me on Instagram, or that's the best way to reach me. Um, so that's really fun. Attend some of your um, public library local events and be able to connect there with authors. So we have um, the Austin Public Library here that often partners with book people. We just both got to meet Jason June and Steven Salvatore. They did an event with our friend Khalees Rowe, um, and that was so, so fun. But also, Rick Gordon is coming here with Austin Public Library and Book People like in September. So um, don't be afraid to reach out to them or market those kind of events to your kids. Um, <clears throat> you know, maybe you can buy a ticket and give it away as a prize um, for them to go attend the event. I also encourage you really to remember that they're professionals and that you want to pay them for their time, just like you would your hairdresser or your um, plumber or anybody else that's going to spend time, right? Even though they're your um, buddy or even though you love them so much, like they still, um, time is money for everybody, right? So pay them for their time. And then just success-wise, make sure you talk logistics, like if they need a mic or a screen or anything like that, 
uh, beforehand so that they know what to expect and you know what to um, prepare for them. And we really entice attendance with our kids with food and the author signings. Always. So we almost always give away like a book that the author has signed. And then of course we send out like a pre-order link um, where the kids can come with their own purchased copy. And then um, any of those books that the author will sign for them. A lot of times the kids won't have prepared ahead of time to necessarily have bought a book. And so the author will bring like book plates that they could sign for the kids, um, which is also a really neat way. So then when they do buy the book, they can just stick it in there. Um, so that's a fun way to get those author visits. And there's a whole planning document for you. Okay, and then, you know, of course, we all know that it's so important to collaborate with the classroom teacher. And so um, like our new teachers were on campus this whole week and our, all the rest of our staff doesn't return until next week. So like one of the things I did was reach out um, on Wednesday and I made queso for all the new teachers and just decorated at my workroom and I said and made signs that said we're nacho ordinary library and then I had a little just a little basic information sheet offering the thing, the services that I provide here because a lot of the new teachers don't understand like you know we have a, a green screen studio we your kids can podcast here we have the breakout um, games we have a 3d printer we have um, a um, pin maker that they, the kids can make their own flair. Um, so it's, it's, I think it's important to, to grab those new teachers when they first step on campus. And then it also, you know, creates that relationship with them. So already um, I feel great this week because the, they were like, oh my gosh, I didn't know, you know, especially the young brand new teachers, like this isn't what the library was when I was in school. And, and so it just gives you that chance to hook them. I don't know about your schools, but my administration is kind of stingy with that time to actually have time to present to teachers. So that was a great way, just saying, I have a little snack for you here, just had some queso and chips and they could um, take a sticker. Cause that's one of the things I do is I create, um, uh, one way that I brand my library is I make stickers and one, one of them says Raiders Read, we're the Rouse Raiders. And I use, um, sticker mule for my stickers. I know Carrie uses somebody else, but uh, I just think that's a really fun way. The kids like the stickers, the teachers like the stickers, and it just get, it just makes them think for a minute about, oh yeah, the library is a resource that I maybe hadn't thought of before. Um, so for logistics, like we said, we have, we're fortunate enough to have a choosing time, like advocate time in the middle of the day. It's about 30, 35 minutes for each of us and kids are allowed to portal wherever they want to go. Um, we've tried to one, allow them to portal here, like keep it open all the time as much as we can, but also to have fun events, programming, things like that for them to come. That's when we host our author visits. Um, but we're also available all day, right? Before and after school and during lunches for kids to come without any um, like reservation. Holly's gotten so popular though that she actually does have to use library track for her reservation system for the lunches to make sure she only has the number of people for the seats because it's that popular um, and that's amazing. And then um, during class, we just highly encourage them if they're gonna come down, just make sure they have a pass. And I put a link in the doc about um, like a infographic, like here's a bunch of reasons to come down, not during class. And then here's reasons to come down during class, just to kind of delineate for teachers and students, like the things that I really want them to do and have fun with when it's not education, you know, class time but then all the things um, that they still could do during class time to kind of honor that. We both also make a really big effort to build those relationships with kids. Um, neither of us have a self-checkout book station. We check out our kids, ourselves or our assistants check out our kids' books. And I know that's not necessarily a logistic that everybody can manage, um, but we do here and it helps me so much learn those kids' names, build relationships with them about what they're reading, what they like, what I could purchase for them. Um, what to recommend to them. You know, if they're interested in a certain author and I found out that that author's coming or that that author's hosting a webinar or whatever, I send that to them, um, you know, through email or things like that. So it just, it builds those relationships and it really does begin by learning their name. And I, I say their name every time I see them so that I'll remember it. And I know that sounds um, like basic, but it is so important. Um, a couple of years ago during COVID when we were having so much trouble getting students to really be in the library because we only had like a 10th of our kids on campus, I think. Um, we hosted a student advisory. So we we purposely picked kind of a kid from each extracurricular and a kid from each kind of academic club. And we said, hey, you're invited, you're special. You're invited to the student advisory group. And we just asked them questions about what they'd like to see going on in the library. Um, and I put those links in the document, but we really just needed 
some student guidance and we weren't having like a natural flow of traffic yet because of COVID. So um, that really helped one show kids that we wanted to serve them and wanted the library to be for them. And it wasn't like the traditional book warehouse kind of misconception that they had, but also too, it helped us give programming that they actually wanted to attend. And like one of the other presenters said, even if you have three or four kids come, that's three or four kids, like don't be discouraged, you know, and it means you have more supplies for the next time you want to do it. Um, and the kids will be, I promise you, they'll come back, they'll bring their friends later and they'll say, hey, the library is this really cool place. I came here and did this craft earlier today. You should really come meet Miss Hensley. You should really come meet Miss Burns. And if they have those memories. They're going to remember how you made them feel. So keeping it that safe place, um, we both are also real big, big advocates for LGBTQ and making sure that we have um, books for all of our students and all of our staff and that they all feel um, safe to do and check out as they as they would like, read everything that they want. And I think it that goes beyond even the books that we offer offer and both of us are like that's a hill we'll die on mm -hmm. we're in texas and it's been a nightmare but um we are we're fighters <laughs> so i have like my kids know i have a special section of the library and it's really pretty much all those books that they're telling kids they can't have and you know i'm, I'm just i will fight and then as far as the safe place goes I'm fortunate that I have in my workroom a gender neutral bathroom. So all of the trans students on my campus know that that's a safe place. They don't have to ask me. They can just come in and use my bathroom and um, not be hassled when they're, you know, trying to figure out where to go. Oh, okay. Sorry. Um, brand promotion. We talked about, there's my stickers from Sticker Mule. Um, Carrie does a great job of her 20 reasons to visit CPHS, where we both try to stay really active on social media with our Instagram accounts. Um, you can see at the bottom, there's a slide that says librarian corner. Um, I was struggling with how to get the word out to teachers about all the things we have going in the library because I know they're really busy. And my administrator was nice enough to give me one slide in the weekly newsletter that they send out to um, the staff. And so I just try to do, I try to make, make it, you know, easy, but letting them know these are things that are going on. These are resources we have for you. These are activities we have coming up for kids um, and just those ways to stay connected and let people know what's happening in your library. So um, just to wrap up in the Q&A, we had questions about where we make our stickers and how we print them. So like Holly said, we print them in Sticker Mule. I use Amazon. I can send that link in the doc and we both make them in Canva, I think. Yeah, we. I, I created mine in Google Draw. Okay. But and then um, whatever. Yeah. I Sandra Harry Harrison, I posted some um, options for that 30 minute advocate time. I posted some sample calendars. So I just do lots of different things. But this year we're trying to make it more themed with like Maker Mondays or Wellness Wednesdays. I have a teacher willing to do yoga this year. Um, so we're just trying to spice it up, vary it up, and have lots of different offerings. All right, we're gonna try to drop as many of the resources as we can in the um, doc that Carrie's gonna attach, or I'm not sure how it's gonna work. Yeah, but, it's in the, yeah, it's in the chat. And then um, our info is here too. Feel free to message us or email us. All right. Thank y'all. Well, I agree with what Maria said in the chat. Keep up the good, the good fight because um, I know you guys are really going through it. But, you know, um, we send you just good vibes and prayers your way. Thank you, Thank ladies. You. Great ideas. Oh, my God. For secondary and elementary. Give them some love in the chat. Please go on social media. And I do apologize. I didn't remind everybody to do that for Christina's um, presentation. My bad. I was multitasking over here. So please give the ladies some love in the chat, also on social media. Thank you, ladies, for joining us today. And um, believe me, all the resources will be shared in a one pager very soon. Okay. Thanks again, ladies. Thank you.